Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and this is the first of four videos covering the process of how I've gone about making this head as a character bust. Okay, so uh, I'm going to create a new document and I'm going to show you the various steps that I've used in order to create stuff. So first off, I've grabbed a, a Z-sphere, put it into edit and I'm just using this as a platform to build on top of. Uh, so it's not going to have much detail in it. It's just going to be a basis, a framework for putting um, Z sketching uh, on top of it. So all I'm going to do with this is just build up a bit of geometry um, that's going to form the basis of the head. Obviously you can uh, shrink and increase the size of the reticle using the uh, bracket keys next to the P uh, key on your keyboard. And if you want to smooth stuff out, press the shift key and go over the top of it. If you want to get rid of stuff, press the alt key and click on it. And that will take some of these segments away. As you can see, um, I'm just creating very rough shapes at the moment. Um, there's no kind of facial detail. I'm just trying to block out the overall form. And to be honest, that is enough. So I'm going to switch this into a Polymesh 3D. I've just clicked on and I need to turn my symmetry back on by pressing X on the keyboard. And that lets me then start smoothing um, and using the uh, main tools within ZBrush to actually start sculpting. Before I can do that though, I'm going to click on Dynamesh here and that basically rebuilds this entire mesh so that if we've got any uh, anomalies in the surface or bits that just don't smooth out, I can, uh, I can basically kind of get rid of that using Dynamesh. Um, one thing that I always recommend to people when they start using ZBrush is uh, with a clear tool, turn your intensity right down. Uh, it's, it comes with a default of 50. Um, as you can see with what I'm doing, I've got it set at 7. You can't even go lower than that. Um, it just gives you far more control uh, and you're more likely to get reasonable sculpts out of ZBrush if you use that lower intensity. Okay, so to kind of brush back the way that I'm doing there, um, all I'm doing is using the Alt key and uh, sculpting on the model. And that activates the inverse of what I've got. So if you look at the intensity level, which says seven, uh, just above that, it says Z add. Well, that adds to the sculpture each time you make a mark. The key next to it is mapped to the Alt key so when you press the Alt key, it does the Z sub and takes the, or pushes down the geometry. Okay. Um, so as you can see, I'm just smoothing out the surface of the back of the neck. And I'm just feeding that into the kind of top of the shoulders. One thing that I would always recommend when you do start sculpting is that you regularly turn around your mesh so that you can see it from different angles. And the reason for that is that when you start sculpting stuff, if you just focus on one bit, it might look fantastic. Uh, but once you turn your mesh and you can see how it sits in relation to everything else, you might find that it's distorted or that it, you know, it doesn't quite fit the rest of the model. So by turning around the mesh on a regular basis, you get into check and see whether things are in proportion or whether there's just areas of your mesh that need extra attention. Okay, with regards to building a character bust, um, it's up to you how far you take it. Um, with this one, I'm just, you know, I'm going to build a little bit of the shoulders in there a little bit of the torso just so that if there's uh, any kind of character that I might implement this onto um, I've got 
a section that I can then start lining up with, you know, a uh, decapitated body. I, I can I can use this to line it up uh, with the area that the head should be in. Um, if you just got a free floating head, then yeah, that's fine. But you might not get it a hundred percent right with how you want it to uh, incorporate it into the body. Okay, so the, the other tool that I uh, use a lot is this move tool. And as it indicates, it just moves mesh around. It's really good for just grabbing chunks of mesh and, you know, moving them into better positions. As you can see, I'm really kind of forming the shape of that head quite effectively with that. Okay, so there's a bit of a wide chin there. I just need to adjust that. There we go. Okay, you've got quite a flat head, so I'm going to start kind of working some of these details into the uh, face. But first, because I've got DynaMesh activated, um, I can rebuild that by pressing the control key and dragging a marquee, and that actually um, rebuilds the mesh again. So if you overextend on any polys or anything, um, and you're just thinking, oh, well, the, the faces are becoming too faceted. You could always use DynaMesh to rebuild your mesh so that it gives you uh, more information to actually play with. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just kind of building the throat area. Um, leading that into some clavicle bones. And... The thing to bear in mind with ZBrush is that it's a very forgiving package. So if you do make any sort of mistakes or um, you know things aren't quite working the way that you're wanting them to work, you can always use the uh, shift key or just scrap parts of it and start again or use the DynaMesh to rebuild things. So you know there's no need to panic if, uh, if things aren't quite working the way that you're expecting them to. Okay, so as you can see at the moment, I'm just building up some facial details. Um, obviously, I'm on the nose at the moment. I'm going to feed that into the, uh, the forehead. It's not using the clay tool to push back. But to be honest, you're going to get better results by using the move brush, as I've just done there, um, to actually build the eye sockets. So I'm just going to blend in a bit of that nose into the cheek area and feed that up into the forehead okay so the, the forehead's looking quite shallow at the moment so i'm just going to build that up using the clay tool and then uh, check the shape of it around the rest of the head oh, Obviously, when you start building up geometry in one place, again, this is where checking different angles of uh, the model will come into play for being able to see whether there's bits that are, uh, you know, not elevated enough or there's an odd shape to it or it just needs more attention. So I can't stress enough how much you need to keep just rotating around and seeing if there's any areas that need additional attention. Okay, so I'm just going to build in a bit more for this mouth. I'm just using the, the clay tool to actually define that top lip there. If, if you do it right, you can kind of pick up that, um, that crease that comes down from the edge of the nose, the nasolabial fold. If, if you build up the top lip, it's a bit like a moustache shape. Um, it will actually kind of give you a, a basic form of that crease. So it can be quite a useful method to actually do that. Um, and likewise, if you've, if you've built it up in that kind of moustache shape, it also gives you a basis for the corners of the mouth, which I have seen people struggle with trying to get that information um, just by sculpting. 
Yeah, so we're, we're coming up to about 10 minutes. There's a rough shape at the moment. Um, most of the kind of basic forms are, are kind of coming together now. I'm just building the uh, the main muscle that comes down from the underneath the back of the ear that goes into the clavicle bone, the sternocleidomastoid. Um, but I'm, I'm going to probably look at kind of separating off onto another video um, at this point. So, okay, thanks for watching, and that will be video one.